Jar Conradi. He is from Peregrine Capital. He's the CEO and one of the fund managers. Uh, Peregrine, of course, one of the uh, fund managers with the oldest hedge funds in the country. Uh, so uh, over to you. Right. Thank, thank you very much for the introduction, right? Uh, right. And as Rake said, I'm, I'm going to be discussing Peregrine Capital. We're the longest running hedge fund business in South Africa. With uh, We've been around for 22 years. Um, and I think thank you all for listening this morning. I, th I think it's an especially topical um, time to discuss hedge funds uh, after the five tough years we've had in the South African equity market and especially this year's volatile environment. Um, we've seen significant interest from invest investors this year to talk about the diversification hedge, hedge funds can provide to their portfolios and also the return enhancement characteristics. So we've seen a significant increase in, in new clients to, to, to join our funds and, and to join us as partners. And we think it really is only the beginning. Hedge funds probably end up significantly bigger in three or five years time and running a significantly larger percentage of the pool of South African investable assets. So let's start by just spending some time on the history of our firm. We're a boutique fund manager. We run about 9 billion rand in investor money, and we were founded in July 1998. So really um, tried and tested over various market cycles. We've had the same investment process all the way since inception of our funds. Um, and many of you will know the hedge fund industry, but for, you, for those that don't, I think we are well regarded and respected in the industry. Um, at the Hedge News Africa Awards, which is the big hedge fund industry awards, um, they've, we've, we've won numerous awards over the years, but they've got a five-year performance award that really signifies medium-term performance. That's the most important one for us. And I think in the last eight years that they've had this award, we've won it six out of those years. So I think really well respected for performance in the industry. Um, before I get into a little bit of our process, I'm going to start talking about our two flagship funds, and I'm going to show you the performance. Um, I think performance is really a key way to measure a fund, especially if it's long-term performance. So what we've done on this slide is um, we've said, let's look at our fund against the other very best funds in the South African market. So um, we've compared ourselves against the entire unit trust industry here. There's 2,000, more than 2,000 unit trusts in South Africa. We've said, let's look at the very best funds in South Africa since inception of our funds. Assume an investor of the entire 2,000 had perfect foresight and could pick the best unit trust fund at that date. How would he have done in that fund compared to the Peregrine Capital funds? If we start on the right with our pure hedge fund, that's our low volatility, low risk fund. A million rand um, on day one in pure hedge has given you 6,200% return. So that means that million rand is worth 63 million rand right now. Had you picked the very best other fund in South Africa, you'd be 2,500% up or a million rand would be about 25 million rand. So almost 25 times out before two and a half times outperformance over that time, and you'll see inflation was 200%, so massively outperforming inflation. If you look at high growth uh, on the left, the story is even better. A million rand day one is worth 97 million rand right now, where the next best fund gave you uh, 20 times return, you're at 20 million rand. So almost five times outperformance and a more than 10 times outperformance of the JSC also index over time. Let's now talk after that about what's similar to funds you know in hedge funds and, and what's different. So firstly, hedge funds are probably the closest alternative asset to traditional equity funds that, that most people use. We fall under the same regulatory framework. We're also regulated collective, in, regulated collective ski, investment schemes um, under that same regulatory net. Additionally, we also run multi-asset portfolios. These are the biggest unit trust categories in SA. You would all know the balance fund category, multi-asset high equity, and the multi-asset low equity being the stable fund category. Both our funds compete with funds in those categories. So again, similar to, to funds you know. Um, and then there's various risk profiles that we run similar to the unit trust. We run the pure hedge fund for low risk appetite clients that want kind of steady, stable inflation beating returns and the high growth fund that takes bigger position in the high conviction ideas for clients with more appetite for volatility. Now we get to the key differences uh, between hedge funds and long only funds. Um, I'd say the key one is the bi-directional investment strategy. This means we've got the tools to bet against companies or go short companies we don't like. So over and above what a long only can do, buying companies you like, um, we can also say we think a certain company will underperform the market or will perform poorly, and that's a great additional tool to reduce risk in our funds and to make um, alpha or generate outperformance when the market goes down. 
I think the final key difference is the wider set of tools available to us. Over and above shorting, we can do pair trades, we can do special situations investing. So basically, versus a long only manager, we've got a bigger set of tools that we can utilize to generate returns for our funds and our clients in a variety of market environments. And in a year like this, it's been especially relevant to be able to protect the funds in down markets that we saw in Feb and March. We've spoke about, spoken about returns a few, slide back, a few slides back. I think it's always key to ask, at what risk has that return been generated? What level of risk do we take in these funds to generate the outperformance we have in the long run? So if, let's start with the pure hedge fund. That's our low risk fund. This fund has actually never had a negative year in 22 years. Clients love the low risk and low volatility in this fund, knowing that they're unlikely to ever have to sit through a negative year. No one likes negative returns. And in fact, the biggest ever peak to trough drawdown that we had seen in this fund is only 5%. If you look at the high growth fund that we, where we do take more equity exposure and more risk, even there, we've had 18 out of 20 years being positive with the biggest, with the most significant drawdown at 17% over that period of time versus 40% for the market. Uh, again, the graph on the right shows you the different um, funds and how they compare with the long only categories. The pure hedge fund is at a substantially lower drawdown than SA multi-asset and high growth fairly similar to the balanced fund category, both much less than the market. So it basically just drives home the point that these returns have been generated not by taking excessive risk, but by stock picking, good portfolio management, and managing overall risk in our funds. Let's now just spend a few more minutes on each of the funds. Um, our high growth fund, and what we've done here is on the right, on, on, the, on the graph, we've shown you the blue bar being our high growth fund and how that's compared with the gray bar being the overall SA market and the red bar being the balanced fund category. I think the pleasing thing for us here is just the consistency, consistency that our process has generated. If you look at each of these seven periods, year to date, one year, three years, five years, 10, 15, and since inception, it's consistent outperformance over every single time period. And the outperformance is again, fairly consistent between about five and 10% per annum uh, versus the peer group of funds. So at this point in time, investors typically ask me, what do we do differently or what do we do to generate these kind of, out, these kind of outperformance numbers and is that sustainable in the long run? Now, we haven't got enough time today to go into kind of all the tools and the portfolio management skills we use. Um, so I'll just summarize it here. It's never only one thing that generates outperformance. If it was one thing or one trick, that would have been copied and there would be many track records like ours. So what we always say is you've got to do many, many things consistently right to be a great fund manager and to deliver great risk adjusted returns for clients. So that involves finding great long-term winners, but also finding frauds or betting against companies that's going to underperform, running pair trades in the same sector, having the right global versus SA asset allocation, and then managing the overall portfolio downside through options and other the tools. So you've got to do a whole bunch of things consistently right. There's no silver bullet. We always say there's, uh, there's many, many lead bullets you've got to use to generate consistent returns for clients. So uh, just to end off on the growth fund, you, are, you, you should expect to have some volatility here, again, similar to that balance fund category, but we do aim to generate substantially higher returns over time than the category. If we now move to our peer hedge fund, Versus high growth, this has been even more consistent over time. If you look at everything from year to date to 15 years, it's a very, very consistent 10 to 15% return per annum that we've delivered for clients. Also again, at least 5% above the peer group over every one of those time periods and about six or 7% above inflation. So I think this is a fantastic product for clients that have low risk appetite, but want consistent inflation beating returns. So they still wanna grow the purchasing power of their money. And again, um, I think this is ideal for clients that don't want the downside and don't want to um, struggle with having negative periods. Even in February and March this year, when the JSE was down kind of 35, 40% at peak, Pure Hedge was up in that first quarter. So a real standout perform performance in a client's portfolio and achieving the goal we have of reducing risk um, while delivering great returns for clients. So I'm... I'm We've got some time, so I'm going, to spend, um, I'm going to spend a minute or two just on one interesting sector in the portfolio right now to give you an idea of the type of opportunities um, we invest in. 
We think the food delivery space is one of the most interesting sectors globally at present. Um, you, you'd probably, many of you would know the food delivery sectors as you've used them during COVID. This would be Uber Eats in South Africa or Mr. Mr. Delivery. It's been a fantastic service to use while you can't go sit down at restaurants. But in fact, this, this sector has been growing very rapidly globally over the next five years. Some of these businesses like a Delivery Euro has grown by more than 100% in terms of their orders this year. I guess what we like here is it shows you the benefit of doing offshore research on interesting sectors. There's just virtually no sectors in South Africa growing at 100% at present. Um, so finding opportunities that you can't in SA and also finding opportunities that's early in the growth journey. We think these businesses have legs over the next five or 10 years as the penetration of food delivery grows um, and also as, as they add additional services to their platforms. Um, so for example, additional things these platforms can do um, is grocery deliveries within 30 minutes, um, pharmacy deliveries. So having that user base um, that regularly interacts with your app allows you to sell additional services um, to them. So it's probably one of the sectors we're most excited about. And I find we own Delivery Euro, we own Just Eat Takeaway, that's a dominant player in Europe, and we own Mate One Dianping, that's the dominant player in China. So if I just go back to, um, to our final slide, um, one of the requests we've had from a lot of clients in the, eight, in the last 18 months is to increase the accessibility of our funds. I think clients like the performance, but they have found it harder to access our funds. Historically, we weren't available on many of the investment platforms. So we've done a lot of work to solve this problem for clients. And currently, I believe we're one of the first hedge funds available on really all the major platforms. So you can find us on Alan Gray, Investec 91, Glacier, Momentum, Hollard, Wealthport, and Ashburton. Um, so I think we've done a lot to make it easier for clients to invest. You can still invest directly with us. You can go to our website, peregrinecapital.co.za, or you can email Alan Yates, um, Alan Y at peregrine.co.za, if you want to talk to us, um, if you want more information, or if you're interested in investing. Thank you very much for your time. Jock, thank you so much. I think, uh, well, first of all, I like the eagle. It is absolutely uh, an excellent uh, rep, you know, logo to show exactly how you find the uh, investments you're looking at. But I quickly wrote down, over the past five years, the fund performed 6%, plus minus. But this year, year to date, 12%. Um, of course, we have seen one of the most volatile periods in, in many years this year, that's one of the big advantages of hedge funds. It's maybe number one, reduce the risk and actually uh, make money from, from the downside. Um, did your approach change this year? Yeah, I, th I think that's a very topical question, Ray, and, th and thanks for that. I think one of the things that held us back, uh, if you look over the five-year five period, is how tough the South African economy became. And I think about four or five years ago, we saw this coming, but I, I would say we didn't realize at the time exactly how tough things would get. So about five years ago, we got our entire team to spend a significant portion of their time analyzing offshore opportunities, but we implemented that steadily. We didn't want to go straight to an SA fund with a big offshore exposure. We wanted to test. That's our approach and our philosophy work there. I think it's been extremely pleasing how well the offshore ideas have done. The only thing I'd wish is that we probably pushed harder sooner, and I think that explains why we've done six or seven percent of the last five years, still handsomely outperforming the all-share and other funds, but we really aim for 15 or 20 percent per annum in the high growth fund. So I think this year, despite the tough market environment, has been a more normal year for us. We've had great winners and we've been able to manage the downside in, in Feb and March. I mean, what, one of the key, I think, aspects to, to delivering our performance over the long run is being in control of your emotions and that stability in tough times. Mm -hmm. And especially Feb, March this year, we saw a lot of people losing their heads and really panicking. And I think one of the things we did there is having enough protection in place allowed us to be rational, it allowed us to engage with the market on the way down rather than panic and disengage at that mm -hmm. time, which I think was a key differentiator for us this year. Hedge funds haven't taken off in South Africa as they have in, in other countries. And one of the reasons, um, is that uh, it weren't uh, listed on the uh, platforms uh, you referred to it. Um, do you think being listed on a platform may actually grow this industry beyond the Peregrine funds? Look, I, I think as one of the larger players in the sector, we've got to take some responsibility for not educating the market and not improving access over the last five years. So I'm not going to blame it on the industry. I'm going to rather take responsibility and say we, we need to do a better job telling people about our products and making it easy for them to invest. So I think three or four years ago when hedge funds were taken under the collective investment scheme regulate, regulation, that was a big step forward because people could say we've got the same regulatory framework, we can be comfortable with the funds. And then I think getting them onto the platforms this, this year really solved the last hurdle 
hurdle in the way. And I think that's exactly why I think on a monthly basis, we're probably seeing 10 times more monthly inflows than we did a year ago, showing the significant increase in demand that I think the sector is currently seeing and is probably only likely to grow. 10 times, that is a significant number. Jock, thank you so much uh, for your time today. Great. Jock Conradi, thank, thank you very much.